So you said, Tony, your big call was that we'd get some relief in the summer, and we did, and the fall would be bumpy. And it is feeling that way. Is, is, that, is that what's unfolding? All right. We've called it the fall fall, Sarah. And I, I think the last time I was on, you, you know, you said, so you're not buying it. And, and the answer is, you know, as oversold as we got during the summer, or as overbought as we got in the summer rally, where we retraced 50 percent of the decline and more than 90 percent of the S&P got above the, the 50 day moving average and all those tactical indicators that kind of kicked off where we got into this fight um, between don't fight the Fed and don't fight the tape. The thing that just has held us off and where we expected the fall fall is I can't find a major low, a major bear market low that turns while yields are going up. Typically, you, if I, as I look back over the S&P 500, I look for times where you're down you know, 18 to 20 percent. And the two year, when the market bottoms, the two years typically already turned. And obviously, that's not the case here. So as Mike, I think, so uh, appropriately points out, it's about the global yields as you as well. So the two year yield hitting 4 percent today, you're saying as long as we continue to see this march higher in yields, the sell off in treasuries, stocks are going to be under pressure. Agreed. I mean, that's it, it, well, that's that's what's happening. So it's not, you know, people like me love to come on TV and Monday morning quarterback. And it's what's happening. It's hard to get a rally going but when the Fed is not uber hawkish. Now, Sarah, as you know, our, our plan this year was to, uh, as, as you outlined it, is I still don't want to feed into whooshes. So what's a whoosh? A whoosh is when you get less than 10 percent of stocks in the S&P 500 above their 10 day moving averages. It's down to single digits today. We're done another 88 percent downside volume day so far uh, by my last look. So, uh, again, I, I'm very hesitant to come on TV and say, hey, everybody run for the hills when, you know, you are you're beginning to discount a recession, which wasn't the case at the August peak. There was this this magical soft landing hope, despite the Fed raising rates in a historic way into a generationally levered system with rising inventories and slackening demand. But now that we have FedEx, Ford, U.S. Steel, Aluminum Company of America, Nucor, we're starting to get that vibe that the recession is finally being priced in, is beginning to get priced in. Right. So, when, so, so the question then is, when do bond yields turn, and could that be a buying opportunity for the equity market? Because there's there's a lot of tightening priced in at this point. There is. I, I, and, and that's really so. This week, what we wrote about was the narrative's going to change. Listen, the idea that you're going to take a pendulum from one extreme where good news is bad news, which is obviously the inflation news means the Fed's going to tighten, the pendulum swung to the perfect spot for the summer rally. The yield, the idea that the Fed was going to be able to, you know, stop raising rates and we're going to have a, a, a soft landing, eventually you've got to swing to the other side of the pendulum, which is bad news is bad news. And we're getting to that point. So, again, I don't, I don't, we're in the fall fall. I don't think there, you have to go buy the next tick, but I think a lot of us are, are kind of looking at it saying, let's watch for the equal weighted market to act better than the S&P. And unfortunately, for the last couple of days, that's not true.